Babbles Travelling Yarns. This is episode 93 and it has been a certain amount of time since I last spoke to you in podcast format, which means I have a ton to show you, including the newest tiny addition to the Babbles family. We still don't have a name. <laughs> We've been trialing out different names we were thinking toast. My sister really wants toast because beans on toast. But it's kind of like, it's hard to, like, toast, toasty, toast. Because cats generally only answer to like names which you can go up in the register for. So, not sure about that one. I really like sweet pea because they, you plant sweet peas with beans to other uh, companion species and they kind of depend on each other. A little sweet pea. Miss Sweet Pea. She has to have a Miss because Mr. Beans is called Mr. Beans. So Miss Sweet Pea. Mm -hmm. We were also thinking Moaning Myrtle because she's very loud and she has sad eyes when she opens them. She's tired now because she's been playing. This is the quietest and the most still she has been for 24 hours. So this is exciting. Oh my god. Maybe she's just destined to be on the podcast. <laughs> so maybe Miss Myrtle quite a cute little name. <gasps> she has this little beard. So we were thinking maybe um, like famous bearded ladies and there's a lady um, called Clementine which is quite cute but Clemmy, mm, not really. So cute. So oh there was also Frank, Frankie, Frankie and Beans but I'm not too gone on that. Uh, James really likes it but mm. Anyway, there she is. She's tiny. James found her when he was driving. He had taken a wrong turn in Kerry when he was driving. And there was a little lay-by, I think, and he saw something um, on the wall and he just, decided, he never normally stops, but he decided today he was gonna stop. And he found her trying to climb over a wall and she kept on running back and forth to a little bag and when James went up to her, like he, she didn't run away or scamper away, like she kind of flooped, um, which means that she was hand reared. I mean, look at her. She's only been in this house 24 hours and she's like pure chill in, in her hands. So she was hand reared, she's used to people. Um, so which makes us think that James went around and searched for every, at every single door he could find, four different houses and a farm. And everyone said, no, we didn't, we, nobody knows. We don't have any kittens. So the likelihood is she was dumped. Um, so she's ours now. In Ireland, did you know, well, unless they're like chipped or whatever, that you can't legally own a cat. You can legally own a dog, but you can't legally own a cat. They're their own thing. They're wild animals, according to Ireland. So, which means that if you pick one up, <laughs> like we haven't robbed this cat, you can't rob a cat. You can adopt a cat and uh, mind it, but you cannot, you can't steal it. And Jane. So there she is, this little baby. We went to the vet and she was about um, five to seven weeks old. I said spot on from the video that James sent me, six weeks. I'm a genius. And uh, yeah, she's got, she's just adorable. She's absolutely adorable. She's got a little white tip on this ear, a little smudge on her nose. Smudge is a cute name as well. And this little bleared beard, black beard. I think that was uh, Dennis from Camabornia suggested black beard. <laughs> I was like, yeah. And oh, the cutest thing about her is she's got these little, little elbow patches, little black elbow patches. Oh, I'm sorry. You were super comfy there, weren't you? Let me just, no. She's the comfiest when you actually just hold her. <laughs> and she's so loud. So she might be kind of loud during this, but I'm sure that won't annoy too many people. So I have got a load to show you today. First off, I just want to say thank you so much to all the new subscribers that have come on board. I cannot believe it. It's incredible. Since I last talked to you, I had 10,000 subscribers. And then the other day, two days ago, I hit 11,000 subscribers. I don't know what's happening. How did this happen? 
it's amazing thank you so so much i do think that it's a it's due to a lot of people um recommending the tutorial that i put up on helical knitting um a couple of months ago now probably back in january um it's getting around and it's wonderful to see people using it because it does change your life when you're um when you're knitting in the round with all with the uh, hand dyed yarn it makes it so much easier you can i'll just pop it down below so you can see it but i just want to a special thank you to jules of um so sweet violet podcast um who was using it and she gave me a beautiful uh, little shout out there so that was lovely i had someone comment on the video um, that they were sent over from jules so thank you so much jules and if you haven't seen so sweet violet podcast it's gorgeous she just made this stunning quilt and it makes me want to go back to a quilt i have started but uh, i've got too much going on right now <laughs> um and also chelsea from legacy fiber arts was mentioning um that she was using my uh the not my technique it's not my technique by any stretch of the imagination it's just helical knitting i did a little tutorial on it and a lot of people have found that really useful but it's i did not invent that technique i was actually shown that technique by a fellow attendee of um, Edinburgh Yarn Festival two years ago and it's literally changed my world, changed my entire life. I knit this top actually, this is the, this is Drift sweater um, by um, uh, Skein, Skein Australia and this was knit out of two sock blanks which were naturally eco printed by Maria of Ninja Chickens. So I had two sock blanks and I was using them it's just in the round all the way down. I was using them concurrently um, using the jogless joint technique all the way to the bottom. And it just blends, it just blends the two together so well. I mean, in one there was more blue stripes and in one there was more kind of reddy brown stripes. So it just blended the two pattern, the two sock, uh, the two blanks together perfectly. Really, 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 really excellent technique if you have two slightly similar skeins or skeins that you think you, you know if they were skeins that are totally different colors like say in the example video and the tutorial that I actually did I used a red and a white um, color now they're perfect for if you want to do striped um, projects absolutely you can do two stripes you can do three stripes you can do four stripes you can do as many stripes as you want you just you will end up working with five or six balls you know or however many stripes you want you'll end up with working um, um, I have worked up to three balls at a time and I, I was um, knitting my uh, fractal you may sweater and that was fine I uh, you basically just have to put the joins in kind of equal or equalish around the sweater just so you don't get annoyed at having to switch three times really quickly in the sequence and then having one all the way around but yeah you can literally join yarn anywhere and um, just next time when you come to a section where you're joining a new ball you just slip your three stitches carry on slip your three stitches carry on slip your three stitches carry on all the way around no matter how many how much you're, you could have 10 in there if you really wanted but I don't know why you would <laughs> but say if you were if you were, if you had a, if you were doing like a large in the round boxy or something like that from the bottom up and you had three skeins of yarn that you were going to use on the body, then totally I would advise you to do the helical all the way up. Maybe just do, maybe do the ribbing in one colour and then join in after the ribbing just so the, the join is. You can just sew it into the ribbing then, it'll be round. Um, so it, it, it ends up being that you just have to um, make sure. Now, sometimes what happens is um, I might do a further video actually on a lot of the questions that come through on that one video. I might actually think about developing it into a class that I might run. Um, if you're interested in something like that, I have had a couple of queries about people who might be interested in taking a class from me. It's at shows. I don't know if you'd be interested at that, but it, if I could develop a class on it, then, you know, I, we could definitely go through all the questions and all the different things that people were having issues with from the comments in the video. It could definitely go through it on a three hour class. Definitely. You need that much time to kind of 
go through all the different scenarios, you know, increases, decreases, pattern, you know, things like that. When it works, when it doesn't work, when you need to do a little bit of fudging, when you need to, yeah. So do you think that'd be a good idea? Anyway, yeah. So I just wanted to say thank you so much for coming over here. If you have come over here from the um, Joggless Join uh, video, that was totally unexpected and wonderful. Thank you so much. Now I do want to say that I do have ads on my podcasts and on my tutorials and on certain videos and that is because I um, I have a full-time job, I have a small business and I have the podcast. Now the podcast takes a day to do, honestly it does, it takes a day to set up, it takes, uh, you know, it takes a whole day from set up, writing the podcast, writing the show notes if I write them, filming it, I need to edit it which means watching it again once or twice to make sure that I've got like details on it or make sure I've got show notes on it or make sure there's not anything that I want to cut out. Then the uploading I uh, takes another five hours ish so it does take a whole day. So when I do put ads on that means that I get on average I'd say about five to ten euros per podcast over the space of a year. Um, I have just recently managed to figure out how to get the money. <laughs> it's taken me so long to figure out Google AdSense. Like a disaster. Um, but I want to thank each and every person who does watch my podcast because you have helped me astronomically in the last couple of months and weeks um, with um, there's a certain costs that come with the podcast, posting out of parcels, um, uh, sorting out like my website fees and then sometimes I'm able to buy myself a treat from it and when that money came in I was able to buy the e-spinner so thank you so much to everybody who's watched the podcast. I love doing it. The, I think the most wonderful part of this podcast is that it allows me to have a little bit of money to spend on things that I really love but are not necessary. So I really really appreciate everything that um, I get from the podcast and I do want to be open and honest about it and I love you all very very much for that. So uh, actually some of that money went towards this little guy's vet visit as well. So, yes. <laughs> so I hope that you do enjoy the podcast enough to appreciate that and that you don't mind watching the ads so much because it, it really does help me um, on a day-to-day -day basis um, to mind for little babies, to get treats for myself and uh, to get something back from doing the podcast. I mean, I love the podcast. I feel like I would do it regardless. I mean, I was doing it for three years without even getting paid until I fucking found out how to do it. <laughs> and now I realize, like, wow, this is this is an incredible thing. Now, unfortunately, you know, capitalism and everything, I don't have control over what ads are shown. I've seen a couple of ads for things that I'm not too keen on, but, you know, that's just the world we live in, unfortunately. But So thank you to everybody who does um, watch the podcast and therefore watch a couple of seconds of ads at the start or at the end of my podcast. Yay! Often as well, I only, I, I only get one, basically one day off a week and that is podcast day. So the only day I ever get off is the one day that I spend doing the podcast. So even though I, I, I really, really enjoy the podcast, it does tend to eat in, which is why sometimes I don't do a podcast for a few weeks because I've got a lot going on, say I need to do something else. So um, yeah, it's nice to get a little bit back for the work that I put in. Oh my God, she's so cute. Oh, I was playing with her for a good two hours before this, so I've tired her out. She's tuckered out, poor baby. But now I've got to show you stuff, so that's gonna be a trick. So what are we going to talk about? Oh, I just wanted to say, if you do, if you are following the podcast or if you are seeing this for the first time, um, give it a subscribe and a like. That helps other people find the podcast and it helps grow the podcast community, which is really nice. So yeah, do that. I've 
I had a look at my, I'm not very good at this, but I had a look at my, um, the analytics and it shows that about 56% of people who watch the videos aren't actually subscribed at all. So I, you know, if I am talking about something and say if I have a prize or, you know, things like that, if you enter the the prize but you don't you're not subscribed you might never see the prize announcement that's happened to me a couple of times where I pick a person for a prize and they've never got back to me and I feel like it's probably because they're not subscribed so if you do enter a pod uh, enter something or if you want to you know take part in any sort of cal or anything like that I'm running um um subscribing is the best way to kind of keep up to date with what's going on and if you win something I don't want to be like <laughs> you know I don't want you to miss out and also I don't want the hassle of having to redraw because it's <laughs> so much stress <laughs> okay should we get on to the knitting that's 16 minutes of admin up top but you've had a tiny sleepy kitty in so I don't think it's too bad <laughs> um I have filmed a little um a little setup of my e-spinner so I'm just going to pop that in here and you can see how the e-spinner comes it's the Ashford e-spinner 3 and you can see how it works and thank you a little as a little thank you to everybody who's ever watched an ad on my podcast this is what has uh you've bought me a birthday present <laughs> through your five seconds of watching an ad I really appreciate it <laughs> The electric spinning wheel comes in this beautiful bag. This is the e-spinner three that I got from my for my birthday as a treat to myself. And this is the lovely little package that you get. So <clears throat> you get like it's all obviously you have to put it all together when it first comes. You get this little package of fiber to practice with. Ashford fiber sample pure New Zealand wool okay. then you have your actual spinning wheel this is the spinning wheel it is this size <laughs> I don't know the exact size it comes with um, your two leads one for power and one for the foot pedal so I'm just going to plug it in There you go. I am working on getting a, um, there's two places for you to put it in as well. So it looks like one of those massive amp mics. I love it. Switch, foot switch. That's the foot switch. Um, yeah, so just gonna undo that a little bit, pop that down there. You can have this foot switch in your hand and just click it. I'm not gonna click it right now because it'll tangle up my hair. <laughs> But uh, you get your adapter for all your different countries. You get a little bit of Ashford spinning oil. I love having this little bottle actually, because it's a really small, tiny knob, so you can oil all the parts. You get your instruction manual, and you get your, your newest edition of the Wheel magazine. And you get the Ashford, um, the, uh, handbook as well to see what you can get from them so you can get all their tops and all the different equipment that they make very handy and the wheel magazine is a lovely little magazine oh wonderful wedding how convenient so I haven't read through this yet that's so much fun okay so those are the paperwork that's the paperwork that you get and then you also get fabulous tensioned lazy kate with two jumbo bobbins on it the tension wire runs around both of the bottom of the wheels so this is the tension tension spring and you wrap it around both of the or just one if you want you can just have one on and then you adjust your tension it has little has a little spring here and a knob here and you just turn your knob to increase your tension and then <clears throat> you bring your singles through this little hoop and it keeps it all tidy really lovely little setup so 
that little bag is so handy to have. Long handles, are very nice. So let's have a little play and see what we can do with this bad boy. Okay, so if you can see, I it, um, this is, I've got a little tiny little kitten here that wants to be involved. Do you want to play? We'll see how well she stays still. This is our newest little addition. I probably will have introduced her already in the podcast. Yes. Okay. Enough of that. So you have to um, put together your tensioning yourself. The instructions are very clear. You get a waxed piece of, um, you get a waxed thread here. You get two springs and you get a couple of um, hook screws. Um, so the hook screws go on either side and then this little kind of fishing line type stuff goes over the actual bobbin. And then you just put on the bobbin and you're kind of ready to go, ready to rock and roll. Um, there is a, this is set up for, as a jumbo. So I can make art yarn really easily on this. What do you think? You're not a fan of, a fan of art yarn? I think you would. I think you would be. I think you definitely would be. But you can also get an orifice, orifice reducer here if you want to make very fine, high twist kind of lace yarn as well. And you just, this is your knob down here, which you adjust your tension with, and your on off switch. So at the moment, it is down in the on section. You probably can't see there. But let me just bring it up here. If you can see, there's a ply or spin Z button. If I wanted to spin Z and apply S button. So that, sh that controls the direction clockwise or anti-clockwise. Clockwise is spin Z and ply is anti-clockwise Z, S, sorry, S. So you've got your speed there. It's set to the middle one there. You can turn it down or bring it all the way up really, really fast. And then you're just your on off button. Very simple design. It's really sturdy, like really sturdy. Hard wood. Um, it's really, really pretty. Very well varnished, sanded. Very pretty indeed. Now the bobbins that they come with are actually a lot. Um, this is in one of the bobbins that I bought separately. Um, this one is kind of unfinished, whereas the bobbins that come with it are finished and sanded and varnished. Um, I had a couple of just, un I don't really care about the finishing of my bobbins. Not, not too fussy, as long as I can get all the yarn on it. All right, so we do a little bit of spinning and we'll see. So <clears throat> the yarn is, or the, the flyer has this kind of pinch hook system. So you pinch this little butterfly you pinch it and move it along. Come sa. So you bring it through here, through this one here. And then this is the best bit. There's a little thing here. Oh, it's your orifice hook. It just slips right in. It's not hanging off of anything. It's amazing. Just really nice design. <laughs> Pop that back in and off we go. You can adjust your tension back here. You can see the string pulling up there. So the tighter your tension, the slower your bobbin is going to go compared to your flyer. Your flyer, your bobbin is going to slow down, which means that the, f the, the faster this pulls on the yarn, it's basically the higher your tension, the quicker it's going to go out of your hand, the stronger the pull. The lower the tension, the more time you have to add twist. So if you want a low twist, um, or if you're finding that it's not pulling onto the bobbin, it's squirreling up here and it's not moving forward, you could increase your tension. But also, if that's happening, actually, just a quick troubleshoot, if that is happening, stop your spinning and have a look here, because often what happens is it's tangled around your hooks wrong. There's a little bit of your fluff which is stuck and it's just not going to move. So you just need to free it up. Make sure this is flowing through really really easily because sometimes it can just hook around this bit and just get stuck and that's why it's not moving on so that's something to look out for as well so let's take a little bit of fluff let's use some of the <coughs> some of this fluff that came with it 100% merino what do you think sweet pea do you like it haven't confirmed that name yet so we'll just 
I think she likes it. Good. Great. So I'm just pre-drafting out a tiny bit. Just get a little bit free. Pop it through the flyer, the leader thread, which I added myself. It's just a, a thread I looped. And I can either just press this button with my finger. Oh, <laughs> I haven't turned it. Now, okay, so with the light flashing, when the light is flashing, it means power is getting to it, but it's not turned on just yet. Oh dear. Watch out your nose, little sweet pea. Oh, she's off. Grand happy days. There we go. Okay, so we are spinning anti-clockwise with that one. So I'm gonna switch that over to clockwise. have it held while it untwists and then retwists and there we go okay I think the tension is a little bit too high for that speed let's go with that just gonna turn down the I'm sure there's a yeah I've just turned down the speed on that just to allow myself a little bit of time what is going on? Oh yeah. So it takes a little bit of balancing to try and find the right amount of twist. So obviously if you're pulling back it's slowing down the flyer a little bit. So the more you pull back on it, the more it tends to um slow down and the pressure is put on the motor then so finding the balance between the two is important. I'm going to turn down that tension. That's a bit better. Sometimes when this is already twisted in and it's gone in just get rid of it just that little bit. It's not that much the sheep are always growing more you're not wasting it. You can compost it, throw it in with your food waste. Unless it's been super washed, super washed treated, I suppose. Okay, so we're at a slow pace now because this fiber is a bit short, I think it's a little bit slippy. So the shorter you have, the shorter of a staple, the easier, of course, it is to pull apart in your hands. So you want to get, if you're starting to spin, you want to get a longer staple yarn fiber. Now it's coming out now. Okay. There we go. I'm finding this one really useful for doing some art yarns really fun i'm going to show you those now but that's just a general idea about how you spin on a on this e-spinner how i'm spinning on this e-spinner now everybody does it differently this type of spinning i suppose i'm doing is semi woolen because i'm letting the twist get up into the fiber now so that came apart and you see how that sped up because there's no no pull back i'm not pulling it i'm not slowing it down so i'm just going to turn it off now there, apparently there is a way to use this pedal like keep your pet like a like a sewing machine pedal i don't know how to do it exactly i'm going to try it i think if you turn it off push the pedal and then turn it on no i'm not sure there might be a way to do that but hey so that is how i spin on my little e-spinner I think it's a lovely little piece of kit. I'm really excited to bring it round to me to um, different sh like different um, kind of spin-ins, to knit night, and when eventually we get our little camper van and go traveling around Europe. That would be so nice. Hey. I had to let go of her for like four seconds to tie on my hair because it was getting annoying.
settled. Oh, hopefully she'll settle a little bit now. She might wander around, but that's grand. So I'm going to talk about knitting now, and I'm going to talk about a few projects which I am kind of working on pretty exclusively. I have no finished objects, right? How atrocious is that, that I have no finished objects, but I have not been online with you for six weeks. How bad is that? <sighs> so let's talk a little bit about why I'm off with my knitting. I... <laughs> I've been knitting this beautiful jumper. It's called the Enchanté and it's a pattern by Atelier Emily. And it's this gorgeous, gorgeous lace boxy jumper with a worsted weight iron yarn. Beautiful, lovely, gorgeous. If you're watching my Instagram, you will have found out a couple of weeks ago, maybe last week, I suddenly realized I had been doing something wrong the whole time. So on my particular pattern, you're supposed to have <laughs> five lace repeats on the front and five on the back, right? Seems reasonable. Guess what Grace did? Four on the back, six on the front, or it doesn't really matter. It's all around. <sighs> Look, all this way I didn't realize I only had four on this side and I had six on this side. What? The actual fudge. So I've just been not touching. I've just left it. I just left it. I did. I just left it. I couldn't be dealing with it. I'm very frustrated with myself. <sighs> you know? You know? So, oh, I just don't know. I just don't know. I feel like I, I probably just need to, and I only started, I only realized it. When I had, um, oh, there you go, go on over there, now play with that thing. Um, I had only realized it when I split for the seams and I realized, oh God, I'm going a, a long way across here now. Why is this blah, 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 blah. Feckin' Egypt, feckin' Egypt. <laughs> oh, well done, okay. So he just <laughs> jumped from my loom. Oh, he's trying to get into the bread. Oh, he's definitely a beans, that's what he is. So yeah, I could, what I could do now is I could drop down this amount of stitches. I could drop down all the way, move this panel over here and re-knit the whole way up. That's a way I could save it. Do I feel like doing that? Absolutely not. Oh, beans, do you just, oh, I, call, I call all cats beans now. Sweet pea, sweet pea, what's she doing? Just ate the bread. So I could probably, I, I probably will do something like that. The other option is to drop down where I had started going back and forth for the, the front or the back, depending, um, and move it along so that these lines, um, where is it? This line and this line are probably probably in the front that would work a little bit and move the where I split for the sleeves back through until I'm like halfway through a uh, lace repeat. So if I move those back into the center, then I'd have these two lines kind of coming up this way and it might outline the boobage maybe. I don't know if that would look nice. That probably would look nice. Um, I could put it on the back. You know, I could have two lines coming up the back. It's not a big deal, really. Just frustrating. I'm just frustrated that I made it all the way up the whole flipping thing and I didn't notice. <sighs> so annoyed. I've also been worried this whole time that I'm gonna run out of yarn. This is I'm on I'm do I'm using my own hand-dyed yarns. Oh ow, my head, sorry. <laughs> I'm using my own hand-dyed yarn and I have wound it into um in knitting two um two fingering weights game. Two fingering weights at the same time. So this is four balls, basically, is all this section. And I've only one ball left. And I have a feeling that I'm not gonna have enough yarn to do any sort of sleevage. And I'm kind of wondering, am I cursed? And should I just rip it out and do another pattern altogether? 
Mm, I don't know. Because if I run out of yarn, I'm like, mm. This is my mist colorway, which I could dye again, but I need to get the special base. It's a Raimi base and I don't, oh, sorry. I've got to rescue some bread from a tiny cat. Me. Mm. So yeah, there's my dilemma. I'm an Egypt. Just for the crack, right? Go back and have a look at the last podcast I did. And see if you can see the mistake. Why didn't I, why didn't any of you tell me? I was so much farther back. None of you saw that in the last podcast. I'm blaming all you guys. <laughs> Not really. Come up here then if you're gonna be such a little whiner. Come on. Look at this beautiful mug. I got this from Catherine, one of my <clears throat> one of the ladies who came to my retreats over Easter. Yummy. Yeah got a berry berry tea in there because we ran out of tea bags crisis we ran out of berries tea so we've got some berry tea where are you going oh no <laughs> he wants the bread oh, oh so look, it's not too bad for you but still Shh. do you think i could just eat it anyway you just, he just sniffled it. <laughs> Stop it. Do you know what? Just go in there. Go in there. Oh, All right. So. <laughs> He's so cute. She's so cute. I can't help myself. Very distracting. Apologies. Now. So, yeah. That's the saga of the Enchanté sweater, which I really want. <sighs> Can't decide what to do with that bad boy but you know what I've just seen this tiny little thing of stress relief which is what I need I'm just going to really quickly because every time I put it out I just get really stressed <laughs> is that why I put it in there I wonder that's uh, from Fatima Nitnak or wellness <laughs> she also have a, has a podcast as well um she's just moved back to the UK actually very exciting and she's moved in moving into a new house <gasps> oh my god you need a bit of stress relief as well, Fatima. I hope you're okay. All right, love. So next, what I've been concentrating on while I've been ignoring that actively is um, in my tiny Christmas bag by my cot from my cottage number nine. Um, this bag actually also is <laughs> my cottage number nine. Massive sack. So yeah, this is one of hers. And I am knitting with my first ever hand dyed yarns the ones that I dyed myself and I learned first from uh, this one here was hand dyed at um my friend Hannah I went over to her house and we played around with a little some dyes at Hannah from Circus Tannic Handmade and she is based down in Sydney and she has wonderful wonderful she's got this yarn and pin combo going on which I am totally here for it's gorgeous really really beautiful but yeah hi Anna, how are you and uh yeah so this is the first skein that i ever ever dyed ever ever so it's got some kind of maroon colors yellow colors and this overall beige it's really really pretty gorgeous and then when i was traveling back i stayed at my friend marcia's house marcia from fairy little podcast for about a week and we had to go at dying there as well and i tried a gradient skein now this is oh just look at the way it, i love the i love when a, a skein of yarn kind of skeins up like this it is absolutely gorgeous love it. so yeah this was separated into 20 gram mini skeins or actually probably less five gram mini skeins and dumped it into the pot about a minute apart and then we realized that we were running out of dye so I just chucked the rest in <laughs> so most of the front of the, front of the last part of the skein the lighter part of the skein is kind of the one color which I think is fine um so I am currently knitting the brioche oh dear do I have the oh I have it do I have it I do so it is a pattern from Pom Pom Magazine Winter uh, 2018. Yes. It's edited by Nora Gone. 
and I knitted, I am knitting the, oh, I forgot how to look up there to say this again, Sojourner, Sojourner shawl, which is inspired by Sojourner Truth. And she was an African-American born into slavery and she escaped a slave owner with her infant daughter and then managed to sue him for her son's custody. She's incredible, incredible woman. And uh, isn't that picture so gorgeous? So I'm still on the brioche six months later <laughs> after I started this, but it's actually been quite a comforting knit. And I am just at the end of this little bit here. So that's great, super great. So <clears throat> I really should finish it, two seconds. I thought, wouldn't this be a good time to show you how I, how I knit brioche? I knit brioche, oh dear. It's on this side. I knit brioche um, in one pass, in one go. So I do it like I do my color work with one yarn in each hand. And I do, I, I knit double knitting like this and color work like this. I just find it easier. So <clears throat> what I do is on the knit rows, whichever color is facing me, in the knit row I have in my right hand because I am mostly a flicker, an English flicker. So, and then in the other hand I have the pearl color, which is the lighter color in this case, because if you can see the knit rows coming down here are darker and the pearl rows between are lighter. So you've got your little shawl and what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I have the yarn over coming from the front I pull it underneath that little section here, knit that, and off we go. Bring both yarns to the front and purl that one. Leave the yarns over coming from the front, knit underneath, both yarns to the front, purl, leave both over, knit underneath, bring forward, purl, Let's see if I can show you that a bit better. Okay, so I've got two yarns, one dark, one light. The light one is currently the pearl row and the dark one is currently the knit row, as you can see going across here. So I want to do a knit. My knit is next. That's the next stitch. And the yarn over is coming over it. So I am coming through. I'm, I'm going underneath this lighter, lighter yarn. I'm coming through, grabbing both of those, knitting it, not knitting that, oh, that first yarn over. Then I'm bringing both of the yarns forward and purling with my light colored yarn knitting underneath the arc, not the light coloured yarn, bringing both forward, purling. So the yarn is always coming from the front. You're always making those yarn overs. The yarn is always at the front. If it's not at the front, bring it to the front. So knit, this, this one is a knit stitch, knit underneath the light coloured yarn, leave the light coloured yarn on top, bring the yarn forwards to the front, Purl with the light coloured yarn, leave the yarns in the front, purl underneath the light colour, or sorry, knit underneath the light coloured yarn and purl using the night co light coloured yarn. That's how I do one pass brioche. And it's so much faster than the other way which I was trying and I was failing miserably at. So <clears throat> it's just making sure that you've brought the yarn to the right part, brought the yarn to the front the whole time. I don't know if that was any use, but sure. What do you think, Sweet Pea? Do you agree? I think she does. So I've just realized that this yarn is a, a 
actually at the start of the project, not near the end. So I'm not going to pr go across the whole thing because it takes forever. I've got quite a lot of needles, or stitches on my needles at the moment. I haven't counted them in a long time. So I just know that how I count is I count the amount of increases down the center to see if I'm there yet and I probably am not. Um, <laughs> so this is a triangular shawl with a brioche at the start and then it moves on you make a welt and then there's a lace section using the darker yarn and then there is a another two welts using both the yarns and then there's like a ribbing section so I'm really excited about moving away finishing off one section and moving on to another because this one is taking a long time you know <coughs> I feel like I, this is why I never knit shawls because they're just in well this type of shawl I just I feel like I never su succeed because you're just increasing 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 it feels like you're not getting anywhere it feels like it's going slower and slower and slower and slower although this yarn is so squishy so squishy so you've got the front and the back front was originally supposed to be this I didn't realize what I was doing and the front is now this so that's fine <laughs> because I was I was trying to figure out how to do all the increases and I didn't realize that I was doing all the increases with the dark colored yarn whereas in fact it would have looked better on the light colored yarn but it doesn't matter it's fine it's going to be a fairly reversible shawl I think so it's gonna be just fine so there's my, and the last time I think I talked about this was in the podcast called Stingray Situation, which I think was my best, oh, it was my best naming ever, I think. No, I'm up there now, quiet up. So, yeah, there she is. So I have been working on her ever since I kind of got uh, sick of the other project, just because it's, once, you know, once you have a certain amount of time, say if you're waiting for something you can pull this out and do a few rounds but it does take a little bit of like oh, how do I set up it just takes a little bit longer whereas like I couldn't do this in the cinema now couldn't do that in the cinema I would need to have a sock project which is what I cast on to go see Avengers which I thought was okay but <laughs> oh oh no oh dear Yeah, I know, but you know, you were going to destroy my weaving, so let's not do that. So this is just a uh, very simple little pair of socks, 60 stitch socks for smaller feeted people, and they're very, very cute. Just, uh, uh, I think it was Regia Design Line, Arnie and Carlos, um, in the colorway, um, this? I don't know. I don't know which one is the colorway and which one is the... Anyway, 616, zero, uh, party 616, Fabra 03653. So, yeah, but it's Arnie and Carlos Regia. And it's really cute. And I've got it in my Knitting Goddess bag. You don't have time to knit. I don't have time to listen to nonsense. Uh, with my little pin, which you will be able to buy at Woolen because the shipment came in. Yes! So that's exciting. <clears throat> and yeah, so that is just the plain old socks. I'm not doing anything fancy. I'm knitting using Magic Loop Technique, which is um, my favorite technique. I have, these are Chowgu needles in 2.5 millimeter needles. And um, yeah, I'm using two balls at a time to knit two separate socks. Um, very handy technique. I really do love it. I found that sometimes I used to, I used to get ladders down the side, but I found this one tip which was really really handy for it was when you come to the end, and when you turn around to start the next section. Say I'm just about to start the next sock now, the other sock. So <clears throat> I'll just start that. What I do is I knit the first stitch and I don't tighten really tight on that first stitch. I knit the first stitch and then. What I do is I knit the second stitch and then I tighten both of them. It seems to even out the pull. You don't get that um, that 
um, ladder as, as badly as you would otherwise. Um, so yeah, you tighten it on the second stitch in. So these socks are super handy for just plain projects where you don't have to look at things. Great for the cinema. So yeah, that's why that's why I, I always tend to have a pair of socks on the needles, but because we don't go to the cinema very often, my socks take a long time <laughs> to knit. So that's all I've been knitting really in the last six weeks, honestly, like that's all I've been knitting. So um, what have I been doing then? Well, I've been getting ready for woolen and I'll be showing you what I'm, uh, a couple of things I'm making uh, or I have made for woolen at the end if you're interested and if you're coming to woolen. If not, you don't have to watch. <laughs> but all of those, yeah, I will be having a big update. First update of 2019 in June. I know it's terrible. Um, that will be after woolen. So keep an eye out. It's gonna be huge, huge. So yeah, I'm not sure whether I'm going to do it on Etsy or whether I'm going to do it on Instagram. Um, Etsy does not have my heart anymore. So keep an eye out on my Instagram, keep an eye out on my channel. If you want to find out more, definitely subscribe. So what have I been doing then? Well, I have been spinning. Myself and Mina of the Knitting Expat podcast, Mina actually asked me at Edinburgh if I would be interested in co-hosting a cal called the Spin and Make Along Cal. And I think she got that name from Elise from the My Two Tips podcast, who, a genius, very good name. Um, yeah, so that was really, really fun. I was like, yes, definitely. The idea behind the Spin and Make Along is it's a spin along that is going to last for until November, really. Oh, baby. Um, and what it the idea is to spin something and then make something out of what you've spun so it's intentional spinning kind of having a bit of a plan about what you want to spin and aiming for it so i decided to go through all of my stash and you can see it in my last kind of podcast um which was basically going through all of my stash and getting ideas of what i could do with it and then of course i ended up buying more stuff because i can't help myself <sighs> Who can? Who can, really? It's ridiculous. So I decided that I was going to spin a couple of braids, which I have had in my stash for a long, 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 long time. Um, and these were when Irish, fa Irish, fire, Irish fairy tale yarns was still based in Ireland. They've just moved back to Germany there a couple of uh, months ago. Um, so I have been spinning up these gradients. So these are the first two which I have started. Um, now they are gradients all the way through the actual skeins. I've been spinning them in a two ply and I have a podcast or have a little video on how I have done that from start to finish. Um, just a two ply gradient by splitting the braid in half. Very, very simple but very lovely. So these are the first two that I have um, worked on. So they, they both go from blue to brown. And this the last part the last little skein that I'm going to be working on is, I'm halfway through it now. Well, I'm not really halfway. <laughs> I have a long way to go. I have one braid, I have split the braid in half and I'm currently working through the first half. Now the first half, I think weighs a little bit more. So I'm going to spin it a little bit thicker and then I'm gonna spin this one a little bit light, a little bit thinner, just so I can end up hopefully in the same place. Even if I don't, um, I'm spinning from the blue, or I'm spinning from the brown, so from the brown to the blue. So if I end up with more blue on one bobbin, it's quite a lot of blue, so I can just two ply, I can just make a centerpole ball and two ply and it'll still end up evenish. So this is the color progression. Just make the make it nicer. So from brown, deep brown through to purple and then into this deep royal blue which is beautiful so that plan then will go will start in the blue and then move down into the brown and then go into purple or purple and then brown um and then the final skate uh, the final little braid of yarn that i have is a surprise braid that i found in that last podcast i did on the um, little fiber stash and this is a braid from um ellie and ada beautiful braid i think it's called autumn berries or something like this um i can't remember exactly you see unfortunately i have lost 
the tags oops um <laughs> yeah so this is a beautiful braid it's got blues it's got browns it's got purples um it, it really it'll really work very well with the rest of the skeins that I have so my idea is to to knit a gradient jumper in in the round a and um, I'm going to use my helical um, knitting technique with all of the first three braids. Maybe it's starting off with the first two because these blues are very similar colors. And then I might swap out, I might stop this because this has a really a huge amount of brown in it and I might move on to this light, this darker blue and then helical stripe the lighter blue with the darker blue. And then once I hit into the brown on this skein, I'll join back in this one and I'll do some swapping and changing, but hopefully it'll go from brown, uh, from blue down into kind of a purpley brown and then down into a brown. And then I'll probably finish off using um, like the, I might do sleeves in this color. So I think it will match because it'll pull out quite nicely the colors from all the rest of the braids. So I think that'll be quite nice. That's my intentional smile project. And once I'd finished these two, I kind of had stopped spinning it. Um, I was kind of a bit sick of the, just the two ply gradients, you know? I have such a short attention span, I'm really bad. So I kind of hop from thing to thing. So what I decided to do then was, I had this mad idea, was somebody, I think it might've been Laura, was it you, Laura Denny in Edmonton? Um, she asked me, was I going to spin yarn for my wedding shawl? And I was like, I have no idea. Maybe? But sure. I had ordered this beautiful, beautiful um, silk and merino, or silk and BFL um, top from um, Wingham Woolworks through my friend Susan in the Irish Fibre Crafters they were doing an order. So I said, oh sure, put me in on that. So what I decided to do was start spinning as thin as I could. I was going to aim for my thinnest spin ever. Now I don't know if this will ever turn out to be an actual wedding shawl. I'm not gonna commit myself to that because it feels big and impossible. And you know when I do that, things don't work out. So that's what I've learned about myself in 2018 when I commit myself it turns me right off and I just end up not doing it which is super great but um yeah so that is my first few attempts um how I've been spinning this is a true worsted preparation which means I've been spinning it as if I'm getting it straight off the sheet um so I've been spinning it by grabbing the the top just there, grabbing the end with a flat palm and kind of clamping it there with my thumb and then pulling off a staple length. And then literally just spinning straight from the tips of that staple length, as thin as possible, trying to go for a true worsted by flattening out all of the, the threads. It's very satisfying. It's a really satisfying way to spin. It's a bit slow, but it does make me slow down and really try for the thinnest that I can possibly go. So I'm literally spinning a little clump of that every so often. And um, it's quite nice. Like, and it, it, it allows you to, it's a kind of a form of drafting. It's almost like combing with your hands. So you're grabbing it from either end. Like say if I was to leave this and it kind of got a little bit like handled, what I would do then to prepare it again would be literally just pull it apart again. And you end up with these lovely fluffy bits that you can just spin straight from. They want to spin themselves almost. It's a lovely, lovely way to do it. Really nice. And you can put them together like that and spin like that, you know? So it's just beautifully prepared anyway. So that's what I'm currently working on. I have started again on my um, uh, gradient smell because I just fancied it. So it's nice to have a few changes. So when I first got my um, e-spinner, it came with a lovely birthday bat from Louise. She added in a little bat for me. It was called, oh, what was it called again? Falling Star or something like that. Very, very nice. It had loads of soy silk in it, as well as lots of different colors of wool. So I had a fir my first ever go at spinning art yarn because I was able to slow down. I was able to control the speed very, very carefully. And I had that large orifice. 
So I decided I would spin um, kind of a thick and thin single with the bat. And then I decided to use some Regia um, white, just a plain white sock yarn. I wanted something kind of grippy. Um, I think next time I might use a mohair actually, but uh, so this is kind of a mixture between a spiral ply, just here you can see the spiral happening, and then beehives or coils or something very, 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 very satisfying. <laughs> so this was my first attempt at kind of an art yarn. I, it wasn't my first attempt. I have tried a couple of things, but it was really fun to just get to know the wheel, to spin just th really thick and thin, just to really get to know what was going on and then end up with this mad yoke at the end. So much fun. Look at that little one there. Look at this one. Oh, <gasps> so cute. Yeah, very satisfying, really nice to use. So on average, I think this yarn is probably as a DK or a worsted, um, but obviously there's really thick bits and really, and slightly thinner bits. I'd say the thinnest bit would be a DK, and then I'd say it averages out to be like an iron weight. Um, I, I haven't me measured how much, how, how much yardage I have on it. Now, when I, um, when I had this spun, it was incredibly twisty, really, 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 really twisty. Um, so I was, um, I had run through the Regia yarn. I had run it through the wheel to remove some of the original ply twist that was in it. Just so I was spinning it clockwise to open out, to reduce the twist a little bit. Um, and then when I was spinning it um, into these coils, that was in a anti-clockwise direction to ply it together. So I didn't want the core to be like overspun because it would be super twisty then. I wanted to end up with a balanced yarn. But if you're spinning using a commercial yarn as a, as a single, you have that twist in that single. So when you add more twist to it, it just kind of goes a bit wrong. Um, so that's what I was attempting with this. And then I asked, I was like, how do you set this skein? Because it was really, 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 really twisty. Um, and I got some fabulous information from a lot of my spinning friends. Um, Alma's witchcrafty lady said, get the iron and um, like hang it off like something and get the steam from the iron and and like use that steam button. And I was like, she's a genius. So what I did was I, I did that and you could actually see the coils twisting into each other and relaxing and like, it was magical. And now it's like dead straight, almost. It's really awesome. So yeah, so because if you were to dunk this into water, I feel like you'd lose this little definition on those little boy, like little coils. I think Helen told me steam as well, really good. Now I was thinking about like putting them into, putting it into like a steam boiler um, and that probably would have been fine, but we were watching a tape program, so I couldn't. <laughs> so I sat there and I had it across the back of a chair and I was just steaming it and it worked perfectly. So um, yeah, no weighing or anything like that on it. And um, so that was great. So when I had this done, I, I still had a load of the Regia kind of unspun core. So I decided to do uh, what I what was happening to me sometimes was that um, the the singles on this were kind of untwisting and wrapping around, almost acting instead of instead of coiling, they were acting like a core spun. So it was coating the whole yarn. And I was like, I'm going to try that next properly, not by accident. <laughs> so I did. I started with this beautiful bat from Spin City, oh, which is just pure luxury, like, oh, it's so pretty. So I'm not even prepping it. Well, I am prepping it, I'm taking it apart a little bit, but it's got some gorgeous Firestar, some Stellina, some nylon in there, I think, as well. But it's got this gorgeous, like, sea mint color, and then different types of greens and blue wools. Um, oh, it's just stunning. So this one is beautiful. I got I got a set of four at oh no, not into my tea. I got a set of four 
and this was like a greeny color one so I have like a purpley one and a bluey one so that's just so bad I felt like I really wanted to get the most of all of these colors so I feel like coarse filling was probably my best option so I did a few samples now I already had the center the center core of this unspun uh, untwisted so uh, I was using the, the Regia, so it was untwisted, so it was kind of a loose. If you were to knit with it straight off, you would need to add more anti-clockwise twist, right? So I was doing a little bit of an experiment and I was putting on yarn. Um, uh, yeah. I was spinning it clockwise onto it, but I had already spun the core clockwise, which meant that the inside core was actually becoming more unspun as I was doing it. It's kind of complicated. And then I stopped and I realized, oh, oh no, what have I been doing? What am I doing? Maybe I should be doing it the other way. So, so that the center core would tighten up again as I was spinning it. So I would, so I was spinning the, the core, the, the fiber onto the core anti-clockwise to kind of tighten it back up again. Anyway, sorry, this is very confusing, but this is the difference. See the fluffiness on this one and the smoothness on this one? I don't understand it, but this one is, I untwisted the core clockwise and then I core spun onto the core clockwise. So this is two clockwises. So the center of this should be like totally unspun. <laughs> I don't get it. And then this one here, is when I spun the core onto this anti-clockwise. So the center of this one actually or actually twisted back onto itself. So it's almost as if, oh, I don't know, I don't know how to explain it. I honestly don't understand it. But anyway, I prefer this one to this one. It's more silky, it's more smooth, it's coming on really nicely. So this is what I've been doing. I'm going to switch it round so you can see it a little bit more clear. So this is what I have been core spinning. It looks so interesting and silky. So if you can see from here, what core spinning is, is it is a core which has um, the fibre wrapped around it at 90 degrees or a little bit more than 90 degrees. So. I've been having a great crack with this. I'm having a super, super good time. So this, um, so the core basically is held at a, uh, at a straight angle to my, uh, at a perpendicular ang angle to myself. I'm trying not to wake the baby. But then the fiber, let's just pretend that this is the fiber. I mean, it is fiber, but it's not the fiber. So the fiber then is coming in from a 90 degree angle and it wraps around and it wraps around, uh, wraps around coating the fiber, coating the core itself. So you can't see the core at all. Boop, boop. That's how you do a core spin. So I'm having great fun with that. It's so, so pretty. I really am getting the best out of the colors. I'm losing nothing in the colors at all, which is so nice. This would be an interesting one to do as well if you wanted to maintain the whole structure of a braid of, of yarn. If you love the color progression, you could do a coarse spun yarn and literally you're not gonna be plying anything. Um, you set it the same as with the other one with steam. Now it's not as stable a yarn, but once you knit it into something, it's stable. So yeah, I might, um, I think this would be a beautiful weaving yarn and spinning yarn and, and knitting yarn. Yeah, so I've got quite a lot to go on, but I like these little samples and they'd be cute little tree decorations. <laughs> so just beautiful colors. I'm loving the colors that I'm, I'm getting out of at the moment. I'm really, really enjoying color with spinning. I think that's what attracted me to spinning in the first place, being able to control my own colors. Now, what else do I need to, you know, I wrote down my notes and then I put them somewhere else, which is useful. 
yeah, so the spin and make along is, is carrying on in both of our groups. There's a fantastic group of people that are chatting away inside in our Ravelry groups. Um, over Mina's group, you can enter there. We, we've also, we decided to open up the making section, making finished objects section already because people are finishing stuff because you're quick, um, which is great. So the what are the rules? The rules are you have to use yeah you have to use hand spun, either your own or somebody else's that you've bought. If you don't have a spinning wheel or if you don't know how to spin, you you have to knit with hand spun, knit something, anything, anything at all. Um, if you're a spinner, the idea is to try and encourage you to spin intentionally for a project, um, because often what we do is we spin madly just for the crack. Um, guilty as charged but at least I'm doing my other project as well <laughs> and then we end up with beautiful skeins of yarn that we don't know what to do with um so Mina has a beautiful range of um podcasts little tutorials and one of them has been how to make your own blending board out of a cutting board um like a bread cutting board and you can buy the carding cloth in like 30 30 centimeter squares and it costs about 45 pounds from Wing and Woolworks and then you get a few needles just like big big knitting needles and a stapler you staple the carding cloth onto the board and then you're set to go you've got your own blending board now the blending board itself costs about 150 euros if you want to buy one already made James could you hand me the blending board is that the stapler? yes that's the blending board right there thanks I've got a little kitten on my lap, so I can't. Thank you, assistant, my lovely assistant. Now, I was using this. This is not good. This is what you need, a paintbrush. Actually, and even, these are really soft bristle brushes. Harder bristle brushes would be better. So I've got my two knitting needles here, straight knitting needles. I'm on the hunt for bigger ones. These are too small. These are four millimeters. I want longer ones. I want a size like... 10 millimeter knitting needle that's what i want but at the moment i'm making these small little they're they're more like poonies but this is the board so my carding cloth arrived finally there's a little bump there i didn't uh staple it down properly but sure feck it it works it's fine um yeah so mina thank you so much for this tip it's genius so genius so i've just stapled it down around to this wood cutting board the wood cut the the board the chopping board that's it the chopping board cost about 15 euros. Uh, the carding cloth was the most expensive bit. I got a 72 DPI carding cloth, perfect. And I got a set of, I got loads of kind of little sample colors from um, World of Wool, yes. Um, yeah, so you put your yarn on, you put your fiber onto this, you brush it down with this brush, and then you roll it off using little knitting needles or big knitting needles. So I'm going to show you what I've made so far. I'm going to put this I'm going to put that there. Um, <laughs> my little, the new kitten is so small she can like literally walk on this because she's, she's not heavy enough for it to hurt her. Oh! So I've been making little Rolex. Now these are the first ones I made. And I put them up and everyone said, oh, they look like cinnamon buns. And I'm like, they totally do. So these are the first ones I ever made. I'm just keeping them in this little plastic just to keep them from getting all fuzzy. Um, and um, oh, they're so satisfying to make. Oh my goodness. Um, and then I made these and I realized they look a little bit like the Irish flag with brown in it. So I don't know. Um, so these are little little fudge fudgy things and um so my friend Adri was asking actually how do you spin from a roll egg and it's so easy Adri honestly it's really really easy you know I've got my ply on the fly here but I'll just show you now you can pre-draft it so you can pull the whole thing out and into a big long snake that's fine um I do that sometimes and we'll see I just want to give this one a go so you just hook it into the end of it or you can you, you can also do the but it drafts so easy. That's it. You hook it into the end of it and then you draft. Now, obviously this works as well for spinning wheels. You know, you just attach it on. You, Mina says to pre-draft it, I agree. Uh, you get a really nice um, spin with that, but it, it's, it's actually a really easy way 
to get some spun yarn. It drafts really easily. It just pulls apart like that. So satisfying. It's really quite easy. If you want to get a very consistent, nice um, yarn, do pre-draft it just like that and just have it, you know, you can even wrap it around your hand or you can have it on your lap and just spin away from those. Very easy to do. Now, the thing about roll eggs is that you can get different ways of, um, so I've got four of the same. So if I spun those up one after another, I'd get like a kind of, if I wanted to three ply it, I could get a cell striping yarn. Or if I wanted to slit everything in half, say I'd, I spun two of these, onto one bobbin and two of them onto the second bobbin and then ply them together, you've got another self-striping yarn because you'll start, if you start with the white every time, you'll go into the green and you'll go into the yellow and then you go into the brown. And generally, we, you will get the same amount of fiber, you know, in, this, in, in each row leg if they're all made in the same batch. So it gives you kind of a, a very nice way to get a self-striping yarn. Um, I, did loads of I did some gradients <coughs> little purple gradients now these were inspired by paradise fibers I've been watching her roll egg making skills she's incredible if you're in the states I really would recommend going and having a look at paradise fibers she's amazing she's an amazing amazing fiber artist so I, I saw her make something like this and now I, it's very difficult to get American products um, just because the import fees are, are so high and the shipping fees are also so high. So I'm sorry for stealing, but I'm, it's, it's, it's inspiration and I'm not selling it. So <laughs> really go and if you can buy her clubs, do. They're beautiful. I wish I lived closer. I wish she lived closer to me. <laughs> So um, yeah, so these are just like gradient. I, I put on, I put on the fiber like this, white on one edge, then like so, white on one side, then went over and then just moved along into the dark, and then rolled them off just like that. So I got eight out of two loads of this board, and then what I did was, I wanted to see how it would look just to take the whole thing off in one go, as a roll egg, and you just get a massive roll egg, and what could be done is if I had put enough on you know the same amount of yarn on for the smaller row legs and for this massive row leg I could get a fractal spin because this one I got more fiber on these so I would get longer stretches of color and then if I applied them with these shorter stretches of color I could get a really interesting effect so it's really cute um, yeah, so that's what I've been doing and Adri, I know that was only a short little demonstration, but that's how you you can um, spin from a row leg. I would advise pre-drafting it just for your own consistency. And um, they don't look so nice, but you're spinning it into yarn anyway, so fact. Little nests, you can turn them into little nests and work on them. So yeah, handy. So that's what I've been doing with those, the little blending board. What else have I got to show you? Oh yes. So we have some prizes. I went down to Cork Yarn Festival, uh, West Cork Yarn Festival, um, which was run by Annie of the um, Moon and Sixpence. Where's my little cup of tea now? There's my cup of tea. I'm just being hidden. Um, and I took a class by Nathan, the sock magician, and he was selling his books. So I got one as a prize and he signed it. And only the person who wins will get to see what he wrote. But this is Nathan's new book. It's called Guy's Knit. It's run by the Haynes family, which is, um, it's, a, it's actually, it's a really lovely book. It's a really lovely read. The photographs are amazing inside in it. There's loads of patterns, really simple patterns as well. So I know a lot of people who follow me, actually, some people don't knit. They've come on board because they, uh, they're spinners or they're weavers, but they're not much, much of a knitters. So I was just, I thought it'd be a lovely little thing to have. It's a really lovely little, uh, massive book actually. It's hardback, solid, beautiful, beautiful quality book because it's part of the Haynes publishing house publishing giant and um uh, it's just great the pictures are so good 
but there's lovely little different patterns in here and if you are interested or if you have somebody in your life who's interested in learning how to knit this is definitely the book for you for you especially like this book is kind of aimed towards men um to get men into interested in knitting and it's it's a really interesting perspective from a male point of view about the comp the the connection between mathematics and knitting and how it's actually more of an engineering project than a girly project soft art which is a super interesting take on it so that is one of the prizes for the spin and make along thank you nathan and then my fabulous friend terry presented me with these beautiful wraparound bags so this is her design that she came up with a couple of months years are we into years yet terry she's been making these absolutely stunning like singular wraparound bags they're absolutely beautiful she has this oh, fabulous technique now I'll use one of my old ones because I can't pull the tags on these only the person who wins the prize will get to pull the tags and close it and therefore claim it as your own but I will show you what they do I'll show you the other one as well actually she's got this beautiful love love birds bag as well so in each one of these I will be adding my own one of my own little hand spun skeins or fiber depending on if you are a um, if you are a spinner or not and uh, that will be um, one of the prizes for the spin and make along so that's three prizes that I've sorted out but I'm just going to show you how those wraparound bags work oh. oh lovely so this is my original wraparound bag the one that I got a long long time ago it's full of all my pins so let me see. so you get your bag and you scrunch it up and then you have these beautiful handles just here I use it as my handbag. They're so, so great. And they fit a load of yarn. There's pockets inside each one of those as well. Inside they're lined with organic. Um, this one has, uh, oh no. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this one has a beautiful blue polka dot lining with two pockets. Or one pocket, one pocket. <laughs> one pocket inside there. And it opens out as a box bag as well. Beautiful. And this other, the cactus bag, so you've got the lovebirds bag and the cactus bag. The cactus bag has a gorgeous green lining with a pocket inside as well. Yay! And then didn't she show up now with this beautiful, beautiful, beautiful bag? It's one of her crossbody bags. So this turns the wraparound bag into a actual bag. And look at that fabric! <gasps> One of you will really love this. So that is my cottage number nine, Terry. She's on Etsy. You should follow her on Instagram. She's a fabulous person and a genius. Like <clears throat> just the idea of having those. She's just very, very smart. She's a smart pants. Thanks so much, Terry. You're fabulous. Now, um, so that is the spinning and weaving section of the podcast. No, spinning and knitting section over. And the next section is a little weaving project that I started the other day. <laughs> the other day being the 1st of June. The 1st of June being the start of Pride Month. Oh, dear my lord. Okay, right. Here we go. This is my weaving project. <laughs> I couldn't help myself. I just couldn't help myself. Now, there we go. So this is a set of minis. It's called the Sweet Pea set. I think it's the Sweet Pea. I might be wrong actually. Um, it is a set of linen minis, 20 gram minis from uh, Midwinter Yarns. And <clears throat> it has massive rainbow um i used almost all of the all, almost all of the kit in this i think i left out two or three colors because they were very similar and it wasn't going to make too much of a difference but it's absolutely gorgeous i decided to on the warp to actually adjust here and kind of throw a few you know blend blend the colors together a little bit i've seen that loads on other instagram kind of weaving podcasts and it's just been so beautiful um 
So I love it. It's so cute. <laughs> it just such happy colors. Um, <clears throat> oh my god, my throat is killing me because I haven't talked this much in so long. Oh my goodness. I am being, and linen is a kind of a funny one to weave with actually. It's not very flexible at all. It's not flexible as wool. So I'm actually having to, there was a really good, um, um, what's it called, a blog post on the um, weft blown page using the midwinter yarns, um, yarns. Um, she did a podcast and it was very, very informative. She, what she did was she got a spray bottle of water and she would spray the whole warp while she was weaving with it. It allowed it to kind of tamp down a little bit more, make sure that this wasn't so um, kind of a warp face. Now I do want this to be a bit warp face, but it does result in the yarn being, or the fiber being a little bit, uh, or the fabric, being a little bit unstable, the more warp faced you get. I saw what she, what happened to her when she when she washed it, and it it kind of it didn't end up happy. Um, I I want this to end up happy, so I'll be washing it very gently. I won't be throwing in a washing machine. I'll tell you that um, until it's kind of settled down, settle itself down. Someone else mentioned that they actually put conditioner, like cheapy conditioner, on the warp threads, and I was like, that sounds really interesting as well. Um, so I might add in a little bit of cheapy conditioner into my spray bottle, which I got from my fabulous friend, Catherine. She sent me this adorable little spray bottle. Now it was supposed to be used for cleaning, but <laughs> I haven't got around to that yet, Catherine. I need to sort out after woolen. Uh, all those things that you got me at my retreat are really going to come in handy. But this is coming in wonderful um, for this project. Um, when I'm spinning linen as well, you have to keep the linen wet as well. It helps with the with the bonding of the fibres and it, it helps um, uh, activate the glues, the natural glues in linen. So, oh sorry, it's really heavy and awkward and I have a tiny kitten asleep on my lap. Look at her, she's so cute. I have a tiny kitten on my lap. No. Never. No. You are not to come near me. If you do. Oh. Ah! Do not wake up with the kitten. Try and pay no attention to the beautiful little creature alive on your lap. Okay. <clears throat> Have I covered everything? Oh my god. Do you know what? This is going to be a huge long one. So I'd say I am done. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And um, yeah, I'll see you all at Woolen. If you're interested in Woolen, I am going to be doing a little, um, a little Woolen preview, a little sneak preview on, uh, on my products once I get this tiny kitten off my lap. But it will be on the end of this podcast, so... If you're not interested, if you're not coming to Willen, thank you so much for watching. We'll see you later. Do subscribe, pop a comment below. Let me know if there's anything that um, interests you or if you have any questions for me at all. Um, oh, I did have one question that came through on the Instagram before I came up and there everyone is asking how Mr. Beans is getting on with the new edition. Mr. Beans is having a little bit of a hard time. He is staring quite a lot a little bit of hissing, a little bit of growling, but he's a bit of a, he's a pussycat. He will run away. He's not attacked or done anything like that. Uh, it has only been 24 hours and I feel like he's going to have to get on with it <laughs> because there's no chance that we would have left this cat on the side of the road or given her into a shelter. It is kitten season, um, which means that an awful lot of kittens who are you know, at a stage where they can't be given a lot of attention, are euthanized. I'm not allowing that to happen. So Mr. Beans is going to have to get over himself. <laughs> but I think he will. I think he will. Um, and they'll. Uh, there's plenty of space in this house for them to have live different sections if they want to do that for a while. We're keeping them separate. We're using um, a lot of techniques, um, keeping them in separate areas, being there, like, um, supervised kind of... Um, meetups and things like that um this morning he had a little they had a little nose to nose sniff and then i think um the little kitten moved suddenly and mr beans got scared because he's ridiculous and he went <gasps> 
so that was good progress I think. We have been feeding them at the same time and they're looking like within eye contact of each other so that they can both um, associate feeding with each other so they can kind of associate positive things so yeah it's going well <laughs> but like I said um, uh, introducing another animal into a cat's area is always going to be tricky because they're so territorial but I do find that if it's done slowly and patiently and not allowing them to fight it out I think that's a terrible idea um, from all the research that I've done but yeah it was a bit of a surprise for everyone um, when it happened but like there was no chance we were going to leave him no James like we were not going to leave him leave her there like on the side of the road in a bag for fox to eat or something like that. or just for her to die from not being able to eat because she doesn't know what to eat because she's only six weeks old so he'll live is my answer to that question <laughs> Mr. Beans's routine is exactly the same. Yeah, we are incorporating the little kitten into his routine. So, um, yeah, he's fine. Or he'll be fine. He's still eating, he's still pooping, he's still doing his normal things, so that's good. I don't think... He's a little bit stressed out when he sees her. She's like, what's going on? What is this? But, um, yeah, he'll be fine. So... Yeah, once I get this little kitten off my lap, I'll be doing uh, a little bit of showing you what I'm doing for Woolen and showing what I'll be bringing to Woolen. Yay, so exciting. Okay, so here's a tiny rundown of all of the different types of products that I'm going to be bringing to Woolen. Um, there are several, several many boxes. Um, many, 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 many boxes. But um, we'll start off with the beautiful addition to my little shop this year, which is these stunning mugs from Remembrance's Pottery. No, I know he's jealous. Oh, stop it. <laughs> so um, these are special. This is a special edition mug that is um, that was made by Natalie from Remembrance's Pottery and it's these small little teacups um, based on Mr Beans. This is stretchy Mr Beans who's just outside actually on a beautiful day today. He's lucky and he's outside. Then she's got her beautiful sweater mugs which are stunning and these kind of blues and green colorways which are quite me and then the absolutely gorgeous knitted mug and the tactile nature of this particular mug is absolutely amazing hefty mug fantastic cup of tea out of that i haven't road tested this one because it's for sale but i do have one and i literally use oh <laughs> use it all the time <laughs> i love the handles on these mugs as well really really lovely um, so I, I have a very limited stock on these. A lot went um, during my retreat. So these may be gone um, within the first day. They are the only ones available in Europe at this moment in time because shipping them across the Atlantic is a bit of a risk for Natalie. So um, yeah, she only sent 19 and I think there's only 10 mugs left. So if you just if you see it and if you want it, I would say get it as soon as you can because they might be gone. Oh! So the next new addition to this year will be my hand spun cotton and hand spun nettle fibre. Now, this, these have been hand spun by ladies in the southern Himalayas in India. And this cotton is absolutely unbelievable. This would be amazing for lace work, um, for crochet lace, very, very tiny, tiny, tiny threads. Um, it is a single, so it does have an active twist in it, um, which is would actually add a little bit of dynamism to your projects, but um, that is something to be aware of. But it is a fantastic, oh, beautiful product. I couldn't believe it when she sent it to me. I was like, these have been hand spun like you can still see, oh, this is as earthy as you get. And then the next earthiest, actually probably more earthy, is this amazing rainy fiber. This is the nettle fiber. Um, it's a it's a specific um, Indian, or yes, well, Indian breed or Himalayan breed of nettle. Um, it's called, I think it's called rainy, but you, you can get similar 
um, here in Ireland you can do it if you want to but um, what I did was I wove this absolutely gorgeous piece of uh, fabric using a cotton warp and then the Raimi thread across it and it has softened up it has gotten so so soft I use it as a table runner it's incredibly uh, strong stuff and it gets softer and softer every time I use it I threw it into the washing machine and it did um, it moved a little bit but it just softened out and I was able to iron out, iron it out flat again. Um, it's a beautiful structure, lovely, lovely, lovely and soft. I could probably wear this now actually. When I first wove it, um, it was very stiff, very scratchy and it did shed quite a lot. So that's something to be aware of when you are weaving with it. But then after it's shed the first lot, it just, oh, it's so sturdy. It's very similar to linen. It's a bast fiber. So if you are interested in picking up some hand spun from a collective of women in India, the collective has, um, they work from home so they don't have to actually leave their home to move into the big cities so they can be around their families. And um, yeah, it's a fantastic um, project which I'm directly in contact with, uh, which is lovely. So I'm very lucky to be able to get this really nice and I have plenty of this plenty of it I couldn't believe how much they sent I couldn't believe how thin this is look at that yes so really good um yes so the next project that I have are these gradient sock blanks they are double sock blanks so when you knit these you can either pull them apart or turn them into two separate um balls of wool like this and this one is a self-striping kind of ish. Um, it was dyed in a self-striping method. And um, so you can pull them together and knit from them like that, or you can knit straight from the blanks like that. I feel like these um, gradients would be fantastic for patterns. I find that if you have self-striping, the patterns kind of get a bit lost. But if you do have like, a, I think a cable pattern, like the, or the Pebbles and Pathway socks or the Clark socks would work so well in these. Also, somebody said, really interesting thought, um, a scarf or a shawl knit from both ends in two pieces joined together in the middle would be beautiful. Absolutely gorgeous. So then I've got this new base, which is oh, a dream to dye. It is a high twist Cardale yarn. It's 100% Cardale. And this yarn is actually, the base is so strong that it is a fantastic base for socks. Uh, mixed with the high twist and the long staple of the Cardale yarn, um, that it works really, really well for socks. So I have a couple of colorways here. This one is Lupin, inspired by the Lupin flower and also that inky blue sky of the world. Um, and Swell, this one's called Swell, inspired by, you know, just the deep, deep movement of the ocean as it kind of brushes against or breaks against the, the world. <laughs> um, this one is August Sunset, one of my favourite colourways. It's um, when I dye uh, different types of purple with blues. Always reminds me of the time that I first started dyeing ever, which was when I was looking out the window at this beautiful August Sunset in 2017. I think I'm right thinking that. That was a long time ago. <laughs> I am bringing a huge amount of fibre to this year. This is a huge stack of fibre that I have ready to go. And I've got three main bases this year. I have a British wool top, which is about 32 microns. This is a fantastic beginner spinner. And it's also really lovely for experienced spinners as well. It's 100% British wool blend. So all of the wool is from uh, Britain. I'd say they're, I'd say it's mostly a, um, maybe a Cheviot and Hill blend, maybe some Mule in there. Really beautiful, beautiful. It's um, it's a little bit higher density and a high crimp on this one as well, actually. But very, very, very handy, very nice blend to have. This one is the August Sunset in a different color, in um, different on, on a different fiber. So it's really interesting to see how they all, how the dyes blend up on different bases. This one here is on a, let me see, this is a Coradale base, which is same base as this here. Oh, I love 
this piece. I love Spinning Cardale. It's kind of, it's um, it's a little bit, it's softer. It, the micron count is uh, finer on the Cardale. Um, the length of the staple length is a lovely long length on it. And um, it's very, very easy to spin as well. Really lovely. And then the Polworth, which is the softest. It's the finest that I have at the moment um, and a very long length on it as well. Uh, it has about, I think it's about six inches on these, uh, five to six inches staple length. This one is called Alice. <laughs> Reminded me of Alice in Wonderland. <laughs> I don't know why. But um, yeah, so these are all my favorite, favorite, favorite uh, blends to spin with, um, with all different levels. Uh, the Polworth is probably the slippiest. Um, but um, but it's still really lovely to spin with. Um, yeah, I don't have any merino coming into um, this um, this woolen uh, just because I feel like there's a lot of merino out there. And also for I get a lot of people who are beginning to spin and it's really interesting to try different types of blends so that's why i chose these three they're kind of an equal they, there's an even kind of split between the super fine and the uh, more rustic wools um yeah i also have heard that my reprint of my pins this is the last pin by the way so i hope to god i'm not lying <laughs> but my mm, the newest order of my pins are coming in on monday which is the monday before woolen so I hope that's working. So these will be available as well on the day. Special woolen price. They have a nice hard, hard back on there just so I find that those kind of uh, grippy clasps or the metal clasps tend to tend to get stuck. Sometimes they tend to pull my um, my knitting projects. So um, yeah, anyway, I like these little plasticky ones. So they're pretty. Now I've got my um, rustic sock base, which is a sock base that I'm actually um, fading out. So I might actually have a little discount on these, but we'll see, we'll see how we go. So this one is called Lark and it's inspired by up the mountains in the bright blue sky when the lark sails up into the sky and the sound, the song of On This Way Down. Um, and then I've got Dawn on Kush. <laughs> Dawn on Kush is a mountain, and Kush is a mountain that we always watch, um, we always try and climb up on the shortest day of the year and watch dawn break on the shortest day of the year to see the turning of the year. And uh, it always reminds me of this really light green, like light misty green, which is super pretty. This one here has a fun, is a fun one. It's called My Lovely Horse. <laughs> and it's one of the first bases that I dyed with the idea of doing a little Father Ted series. <laughs> Reminds me of uh, Father Ted's glittery, glittery Eurovision outfit. <laughs> this kind of bright green. So that was fun. I've got my delicious DK base in some classics. This is August Sunset again. This is Aura, which is one of my prettiest. I love this colorway. Um, I've got uh, this pretty colorway. I can't remember what I called this. Oh, Higgledy. Oh, yes. So this is another, it has like blues, deep blues, greens, and uh, blue, uh, deep, deep purples, deep reds, pinks, and blues. Um, I've got some gold mixed with this blue, which would be gorgeous together in a contrast color, I think. A brioche project, and that would be lovely. And I've got, oh, I love my brick. Another Father and Ted spider colorway. It has this really warm, rust-toned brown. And this is one of my little favorites. It's called Blackberry Stains, and I really quite love it. Now I've got this new base that I'm testing out, which is a, um, it's 100% BFL. And this base is all inspired by Father Ted because I was watching Father Ted while I was watching, while I was labeling them. So this one is God, it's lovely out, <laughs> which is, you know, deep green. Uh, this one is called Spider Baby, Spider Baby. This one is called There's a Child Stuck in the Tunnel of Goats. You can tell I was still on the first episode. This one is called There's Cocaine in It. <laughs> This one is uh, Careful Now, 
and this one is down with that sort of thing. <laughs> this last one is, no, no, it wouldn't be on any maps now. <laughs> which is possibly one of my favourite phrases for the location of Craggy Island. This doesn't actually exist. Now, I also have a Craggy Aran on here, and I haven't named these yet, but this is some of the colourways which I was playing with. This is a BFL and Masham base, um, which is just a gorgeous base to die on. This is the original base, so I do have some of this as a base, as a lovely contrast colour, because you have that undertone with the second tone, which would be lovely. So I haven't named those yet. Those are next on my list. And I have got my flute base as well, my singles base, but I need to. They're in a box over there waiting to be wound up. You know, it's Saturday before Willen, you know, I still got plenty of time. For all those people who are worried about Mr. Beans, he's totally fine. Aren't you Mr. Beans? You just had a nice sleep, didn't you? Didn't you? Yeah. Look at him, chill as a cat can only be. Here he is. He's so huge. Huge boy. <laughs>